Hello everyone, thank you for coming to the BAG webinar, or actually listening to the BAG webinar. I'm very excited about what I'm going to share with you today. So brand strategies and marketing insight for tech companies. So I guess let's get started. So why are we here? I think I want to start with answering this question because we need to start by stating the obvious. And the obvious is the crazy numbers that only three out of 100 tech companies actually make it to their fifth year which is pretty, really, really low. And I really want to change this. So what we're going to learn today, I'm going to share with you how you can differentiate your brand, first of all. And then the second part is how you can improve your brand communication and your marketing strategy. And obviously, we're going to talk about new marketing techniques. We do a lot of new marketing at the agency in terms of how we develop brands and so forth. So that will help you, allow you to attract more uh, prospects and convert them into clients. So the end of the day is to help you obviously for the expansion of your brand so you can get to where you deserve to be. And I'll be very excited about that. But before I start, I guess I need to tell you something about myself. Who am I? Who is this girl? Who is the voice behind this uh, video? It's me, Flavela Fongeng. I am a London tech advocate and I'm really proud of that, supporting um, the part of the organization of supporting tech companies do great things around the world. But I'm also a member of Tech UK. I'm a really proud member of Free Colors Rule. I'm the founder, proud member, I'm a member of Free Colors Rule, the creative agency, uh, branding and marketing agency. But also I'm known as a brand strategist. So people come to me for to help them develop strategy, but also as an international speaker. So I've been blessed and very grateful to have um, to have spoke at so many places in Jamaica, in the Middle East, um, in Europe. In America, I mean, guess I've been to a lot of places, so I'm really glad to have met great people and making an impact uh, for my edutainment uh, presentation style. I'm really pleased as well to have been uh, featured as a guest, as a brand strategy speaker on BBC, sharing advice uh, for tech entrepreneurs around the world and giving advice, giving advice and supporting people is something that I really, really love to do. I, I enjoy seeing people doing really well, so if I can be part of that journey, even better. So I've, I've also been a guest lecturer, lecturer at Goldsmith University. This, is, this picture is not related to a good, my Goldsmith talk, but it's another one that I really like from another talk, but you can see people's reactions face, and that's something that I really like, and I'm making an impact, inspire people to do great things themselves. So really unleashing greatness is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, and I was really happy and grateful to have won the She's Mercedes Business Award, which was which is given to women who are doing great things around the world in business, of course. And um, I guess Mercedes Benz wanted to want to align this type of woman. And um, I have won multiple, we have won multiple awards, been featured in so many different press and media. As you can see, the one listed at the bottom right there, and we're really proud of that. But most importantly, it's giving back to the community and helping charities is something that I really love about. I'm passionate about kids, um, kids being filled and protected and kids achieving their greatness. So I do as much as I can for mentoring as well, uh, uh people or young girls. So why do we now focus on tech brands? I guess, you know, we, I started in the luxury and the fashion business, but I realized that actually I want to focus where this my help is much more needed because the industry and the success ratio of the tech world is much lower than any other industries. And I really want to change this. So my team and I made are on a mission now to change that. We really want to change that and we're going to do our best. And that's the reason why I'm doing this um, webinar, this talk today with you to help you give you the directives. Um, even if you choose not to work with us, even if you choose not to go ahead, you have enough information to help you at least make one decision for you today. So what I'm going to ask you is to stay with me until the end because I have a gift for you and everybody loves present. And trust me, you don't want to miss that present. Okay. So. The, the failure or you know the ratio of success of tech companies is so low is, is also for other reasons that goes beyond branding and marketing but it's also you know the success relies on one simple key word which is convenience convenience i really want you to really put this into your brain you know as a seed in your brain convenience are you providing convenience for your customer for your ideal customer right now if you are not, and if you're just a tech brand for the sake of being a tech brand, and you're not helping you making life easier for somebody right now, then you are not a good, you're not remarkable. So think about it. If you think about all the brands, Amazon provide convenience. Dropbox provide convenience. Amazon, you one click, you place an order, it's here tomorrow. 
convenience. Dropbox, you never have to worry about losing your computer because everything's on the cloud anyway. Convenience. Airbnb, again, something convenience, creating experiences, so you don't you know something, you know exactly where you're staying, you know exactly what expense you're gonna get, you know where you're gonna, exactly you're gonna meet. Convenience. If you think again, I'm giving you Uber, you know exactly what time your cab's gonna be here, so you don't have to be waiting in the cold, but you know exactly how much it's gonna cost you. Convenience, 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 convenience. But most importantly, you know, they also do things better than what is going on in the market right now. Are you coming to do things better? Are you coming to provide a great convenience? These two, that's what make a brand remarkable. I put this in red because it's so important. Are you remarkable? So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of Revolut. This brand came here, not in, they've been in the market for such a, for such a short time, they are disturbing and killing it right now. Because they understood that, you know, the big the big players right now were sitting on the sofa eating crisp and watching TV. And, and they say, you know what, I'm going to do something better. Instead of taking people's money, I'm actually going to bring, listen to the customers out there. We're looking something more deeper. We're looking for a better way to manage money because they are tired of being overdraft. They are looking for a way to be in control of their money. They want to be to troll rather than to be to, to be charged ridiculous amount of interest on their fee abroad. You know, can this be possible? You know, are you coming and changing the world? Stripe something, face you know, PayPal, PayPal, they changing the way people are managing the e-commerce platform. And that is fantastic because when you are remarkable, it creates and requested word of mouth, and that is something that you really want to embrace. So really, just look for how much can you make things better, and how can you can you provide convenience, and that should be part of your story. But part of your story should also be the way you present yourself. Are you the underdog who are trying to find the bad guy out there, who are, who are not looking at the best interest of the customers, not looking at the best of interest of the society? How are you coming? Who are you playing against? You know, it's not a fight, but this position helps you come as the person people will want to support if you think about uber despite all the you know, troubles they're dealing right now people still use them because they love people love again the convenience you can say i'm on this guy you can choose what time they're gonna arrive you know how much it's gonna cost you this is convenience while the taxi drivers would probably would you trust it? Not everybody could trust a taxi driver. Some of them were good, but not all of them were good. Some of them would turn around, they find the longest journey so they, they can get as much money from you, and you never know how much it's going to cost you. And that's frustrating when people are on the budget. Same with Stripe. PayPal made it really hard for people to actually provide a seamless experience for their website. Stripe does this, but on top of that, we charge you more or less than that. And you know, there's no issue with you know of, of international payment because PayPal sometimes can can be funny and fun. I heard about people who, who, who somebody who, who, who made an entire PayPal a payment and PayPal panicked and basically refunded everybody. Which is crazy when you're running a business. This is the kind of thing that you don't want to deal with. And Stripe is much better at this. So these guys are changing the game. And the same thing for Airbnb. They realize a lot of people do not travel just for why do people travel? People travel for work, but most people travel for holiday, they travel for experience. So imagine if you can live an amazing experience by meeting people who can show you around the city. This would be so much better. And that's what I love about traveling. I always love to meet the locals and they can tell me things that I can never read in books or online. That's what really true traveling is for me. Anyway. So I'm gonna ask an obvious question: Is obviously why is brand and brand and marketing strategy so important in your business? But I haven't tell you. I will show you. This is what it's about. A brand is not just a logo, and people make that mistake. You know, I can tomorrow create a logo and put on this cab. But it doesn't mean that people will pay three twenty-five for it or four twenty-five for it. But the brand is what really differentiates you from the commodity to being a brand. So are you a community or are you a brand? Are you some are you something that people do not recognize and don't see the value that you offer beyond what you do? Or are you are you a brand that people will love and will talk about and come back knowing exactly they're gonna get the same service no matter where they go to. And that's very important. That's what a brand is about. It's experience that you create. It's a feeling. Remember a brand is a feeling. It's not just a logo. Logo is a recognition of that feeling that you want to maintain. And that's why people obviously have elements of visual presentation in the way they, the way they present your, their brand. So if you think about something about, about the Monzo card, you know, you can't miss that card, isn't it? It's bright pink in your face, yes? So wherever you are, you say, who, are, who is this card? And then it's a great way to get a lot of word of mouth around your brand. Because when you face too many choices, you're going to go by the brand that you know. That's simple as that. That's basically how the brain works. 
you can have a brain works. So you can't change that. If we face too many choices, you go by what you know, unless you are experimental. Most people are not experimental. So part of part of developing, helping you developing a great positioning statement is about how you write it. And I think a lot of people struggle to write a great, strong positioning statement. So I'm going to give you how you can ask yourself three questions that will help you develop a great positioning statement. You can screenshot this afterwards. So who do you help? Be very specific. You don't help everybody. If you help everybody, you help nobody. Be specific in terms of who you help. What value do you provide? You know, how are you making people's life better? Are you people save money, improve, improve, improve this, uh, improve their savings? Are you helping them uh, lose weight? Whatever you're doing, what are your services different from the competition? Now, this is very important because if, if your services are exactly the same from everybody else, you need to find your differentiator. And your differentiator cannot be we have a great customer service because people cannot see that until they purchase your product. So your USP should always be something that people can. I can 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 recognize without having to purchase your product. If your USB is something that people can only experience after experience, after um, purchase your product, unless you have a great video, unless you have great test, test, testimonials and great success stories, then that's different. But most of the time, try to try to find a USB that is recognizable without having to purchase your product. This is an example of positioning statement, uh, a template of positioning statement you can use. Our company, B, helps client niche uh, achieve, reduce, improve, whatever it is, by providing service A, B, C. We are unique because we, USP, 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 free, don't overwhelm people, which allow them to benefit, benefit, benefit. Yes, this is how you do it. And you can use that for, you can use that for, um, talks or public public talks of even if you do networking yes so let's start let's get into this so we're going to start with a strategy then we'll talk about design and then we're going to talk about marketing so the biggest mistakes i see is what people do is if they try to do branding or marketing like big brands you don't have the budget you don't have the budget so you can't do the same thing they can spend thousands and loads of money on straightforward advertising, direct marketing and and with it, this is not very effective but they have the budget so they don't mind using that money because they know that at some point something will stick but it's not very effective so when you are small a micro business you need to be effective in terms of how you do your marketing you need to build a relationship with your customers before um anything else so i wanted to show you an example of a campaign that was done by uber in canada and you can see if it's a very emotional campaign about a mom losing her child and you know they barely talk about the product or what they do but everybody knows what uber is about so in your case a campaign such as this would not work so you have to make sure that you make in 50 percent emotional 50 percent rational otherwise it it would not people will, people will basically be confused in terms of what you are about are you a fertility helpline what is this about I, I don't understand yes but because uber is already known they really emphasize the emotional intelligent the emotional connection with, their, with their, the customers to get them to connect furthermore okay so another thing that i see as well with tech companies because most tech entrepreneurs are tech companies or tech entrepreneurs tech companies are very clever in what they do they overwhelm people with the details Yes, and that's something that I see a lot when I have, when I work with my tech companies. I all the time have to break it down because I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm going to tell you. Talk to me about benefits because when your decision maker doesn't understand either anything about technology, but is looking for a way to make his business more successful, or work it as or an individual to make their life better, you don't talk about the technology the technical aspect of your of of your brain you talk about the benefits because what happens when you overwhelm somebody they do not make a decision and they do not make a quick decision so always focus on the benefits and not the process okay especially when you when you do networking events so great elevator pitch is an existing example that you can use and trust me it works really well you know explain the problem well what we do is the solution in fact let me give you an example of what i've done so this is how it looks for us. You know how tech companies can struggle to articulate in simple terms the value of what they do and what makes them unique? You pose, so you let your person respond. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. Well, we help them improve their uniqueness for brand strategy, design, and content so they can become remarkable, loved brands. In fact, one of our clients was able to secure 200% funding in a week. How cool is this? This is much more engaging. This is not complicated. Anybody can understand it and they can relate. And that's how you start developing an engaging conversation. So think about how you do it for yourself. 
and create a great elevator pitch for your next networking event. And what people will just say, oh my gosh, give me your money. You know, nothing that's never happened to me <laughs> so quickly, but if it happens to you, please let me know. So let's talk about McDonald's. Hate, hate it, or love it, it's still there, it's still growing, and um, and there's a lot of things that we can learn from McDonald's. And this, despite the fact that it's the most uh, it's a great property investment business, you know, more than a fast food, they are really good. Okay, what we can learn about McDonald's is that when you give too many too many choices to people, they make no choice. They will not make any any choice at all. So if you go to when you enter into a McDonald's store, what do you see first? You see the menu. They create packages. You have on the left hand side the list of all the different products that they have, but they realize that if you want a fast response, a fast choice, as it is a fast food, you need to simplify the decision process by providing options that are easy to make. What do you want? Menu A, B, or C? Oh, I want B. Do you want the larger version or the medium version? That's it. This is how many questions they should ask. Should be the same for your clients. You, you, they come to you because you are the experts. So it's your job to know what is best for them and provide them a limited amount of options. If you provide too many options, there's no decisions being made. Okay, so really simplify it. So free is a magic number, except in the relationship. Remember that. And this is what also free colors, what is free colors, well. So magic number works in so many, so many ways. So when you present your services, free core services, us is strategy, design, and marketing. When we present, we present our unique solid, unique selling points, innovation, fast delivery, but and most importantly, creating opportunities for our clients, you know, because for us, it's an ongoing relationship with our customers, our clients. Then your colors, your branding colors are you using free colors or less. Us, we use black, red, and white. Red is for passion, so our colors align with our values. White is for trust, and black is for professionalism. And then again, how you package your services. You can, you obviously probably have lots of services, but make sure that the more you package your services, the easier it is for your clients to make a decision. So very, very important to do that as well. So basic standard and premium standard will be probably the one that will get the most purchase, which is your popular package. And you will have a few people going for basic and a few people going for premium. So really free is a magic number. Simplify, simplify, keep it, keep, keep it simple. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I hope it makes sense so far. Yes. So feel free to comment in the box below if you want to comment. Design. Design is crucial. You know, when it comes to technology, I've, I've seen so many times how people will complicate the the way you use experiences built is not just about the, 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 the typeface that you use, it's more than that. Think about Amazon, whether you use Amazon on your website or use Amazon on your phone. I actually prefer to use Amazon on my phone because it's very straightforward. You can now swipe and make a purchase in one swipe without having to enter your address again, check, check your address or check your credit, enter your credit card. It's all there. They're making it easy for you to make a purchase. It's all about simplifying. So your design needs to be modern. Obviously, you're a tech brand because what happens when your design is well done and it's easy to, to use, improve, increase the value, increase the perceived value, and people are more likely to recommend you. Think about Apple. Apple wanted to go for to make they make complex look so simple and beautiful. Yes, imagine the first time when the iPhone came out. It could have been a completely, completely, uh, complete confusion in the mind of the prospect, but they made it so simple. Look how all the possibilities that you have under your phone and all that you can do now, all the benefits, and that works really, really well for themselves. And that's why people are ready to spend over a thousand pound now for their phone. Again, the same thing for. Uh, uh, the tech brand, you know, your brand, you know, your your rebrand should be consistent. You know, if you look at the free colors of ourselves, we've gone through a lot of rebrand as well, but it's, it doesn't have to be trusted. It can be very subtle, just in, you know, different font to showcase that you're still in the market, that you, you still keep yourself relevant because when you innovate visually, it means that you, you are, you are always keeping your, your client's mind alert. But the moment you stop innovating, that's when your brand dies. Think about brands such as Blockbuster. Think about brands such as Kodak. They refuse to innovate. Oh, this is how things are being done. Anybody who thinks like that, they would not survive. You have to innovate. Innovation should be part of your culture. It should be part of you, of your identity, especially as a tech brand. So we're going to do a little exercise. So I want to, after I, I, I ask you that, please pause. So what I want you to do is to go on your homepage and count 
How many times you use the words we and us? After that, I want you to count how many times you use the word you, you or your. Pause and then come back when you have the numbers. You got the numbers? Okay, great. So this imagine this is your website. So the company website and then the guy on the right is <laughs> your prospect visiting your website. So when I come on your website, this is what they see. We can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, 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 this. And on the left, you have, oh my gosh, does this mean oh, stop talking? Okay, should be. He's not saying this out loud, but does he stop talking by himself? Oh my god, help me out. Let me leave. No, I'm not I'm interested. This is what's happening right now. You love so much to talk about. We love, we are all self-centered. That's the problem. We are all self-centered and love to talk about ourselves. But unfortunately, that's a problem. When you're trying to sell somebody, you do not talk about yourself. You talk about them. You show us that you understand who they are, what they're going for, and how you can help them. So it's a bit like that. It's like a conversation. Imagine sitting with somebody who spend their time, the time talking about them. You know how I'm going, I am, you know, I could do this, and then, and then, no, it's not a, it's not a two-way conversation. So really avoid. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to, Work on re rewriting your content on your homepage and try to use the word you and your more often than we. Okay. Again, what you can use it, use here, you probably know about the Pareto 80-20 that you can use here in, in creating your copywriting. So more you or, or your and less we or us. This is an example of a website that I really like. Again, you can see from the start, the best for your business is a template. And you guys, straight away, you have call to action, which is fantastic at the top and the bottom. So if you don't know, you can speak to somebody or you can buy it now if you want it now. And then again, same thing at the bottom, they put their free core benefits. Free core benefits. Again, the magic, magic number of three works really, really well. Simple. Make it easy for your client to make a decision. So that's pretty much that. I wanted to show you what Huber has done. This is a very, uh, this is a previous version of their website when it started. And again, same thing, you know, the pictures is not shows randomly. You know, again, we emphasized this young lady comes out of a car. She feels relaxed. She looks beautiful. The sun is shining on her face. And here, what you see in the middle is basically the heat map, which shows where most people are mo were moving them, their mouse on, on the website. So what Huber did, um, they actually move their call to action close uh, close proximity to that heat map. So really just pay attention. Do not guess whatever you're doing. So, you know, again, same thing. This photo represents envy, desire. And again, when you look at her, you want to be like her so because it emphasizes your pain. And you don't want to be the one waiting for the taxi in the corner, um, not knowing what's going to happen. Yes? So very powerful. Let's talk about marketing, the last part of this webinar. So... I'm going to ask you a question. Would you go and on the first date and ask somebody to marry you? No, you wouldn't, wouldn't you? If you did, I would think that you're crazy. And this person say yes, I would think that they're crazy too because nobody should do that. You need to get, take the time to get to know you. So the same thing. Why do in business people want to sell so quickly? You need to leave some time for me to get to know about you. And I think... I think it's a, uh, it's um, it's um, something that you know um, again something that big companies do because they are already uh, people know their brand so they can afford to go so directly in selling. But when you have a new business, you need to choose a different approach. So the approach in terms of communication should be no feel and do stage. So we know it. You want to get to know you, so present yourself who you are, and provide as much value. You can provide value through ebook, webinar, free trial. Uh, um, um, public speaking, all sort of things are possible where you they feel that like they can get to know you before you purchase from you, yes, and get to understand what you're about. Especially if you are bringing to the market a new technology that people are not accustomed to, they need to understand how it works, yes. And then after that, you can work into the two-way conversations where you can ask them for feedback, you can work into an interaction, they start engaging with you because they feel that you're listening to them as well. And then when you reach that point, you can move into the do, which is where you provide as well, involve your people and share success stories where you can really build and ask them to now own it and do something with you. So really, no field do stages, go step by step. Growth hacking. We've heard it so many times. It's a buzzword, and I think it's a buzzword, or is it not a buzzword? I think it still works, and I think it's a um, bear in mind the success rate of, of tech companies. You need to go quite fast uh, if you want to either sell your tech brand or if you want to stay uh, um, on the market. So I'm going to show you some growth hacking techniques that works for B2B and B2C tech companies. 
So first thing first is um, partnerships. You know, if you think about brands such as Beverly and 26 Starling Bank, they found people who have the same target audience and can align with what they do and will find value in what they're doing as well. So remember that like, big companies struggle to implement innovation. So that's why now they have all these um, hubs where they promote a lot of tech companies to um, to create to create new technology because they're very very discount. So who are those brands that may be small or big will value working with you and will have a target audience because they already done the work for you and will, will help you along the way and also most importantly they need to have the same target audience as you because if it's completely different that will never work and then obviously they have to align with who you are what you represent your vision and your values so because this, is, this can be quite damaging because if you do the wrong partnership then you can kill your business in the space of one tweet i mean maybe not one tweet but Pay attention to who you choose to work with. Again, Dropbox have done it really, really well. When you're trying to get your client involved, and that's very important why people can tend to fail, you want to make it easy for them to be able to recommend you. Obviously, they provided additional space, but what was important is how they did it. The integration of Gmail, the integration of other um, other social tools and so forth are the best way to make it easy for clients for your clients to recommend you and also for somebody else to um, and get engaged so make it easier for great integration for people to think about um, uh, recommending them to their friends and network I really like this data cow generator approach that Snapper took. So Snapper, if you don't know about Snapper, Snapper is people who can afford to get a graphic designer so you can use those template pre-made templates and create your own um you know uh, visual visual marketing campaign and so forth so what do you realize again it comes back to really understanding your your customers and your community they understand that most people when they're looking to trade an ad they be pretty much looking for photos so what they did they created a website called stock uh, stock snap io where people can get as many free photos as possible. So instead of advertising um, directly via Snapper or, or any, any other platform, they actually advertise on, on Stock Snap. Imagine it being a, a place where everybody comes to your website and you are the only advertiser. How effective would that be for your business, right? Yeah, so they did. So think about it. There's a way you can create, provide a lot of great values that you know people are looking for again, and you know that people are looking, looking for on the regular. You provide either like free templates or whatever it is, and then what you do on that website, then you advertise your services, people who are most likely to use it. Yes? Good technique. Again, Uber, you know, understand the power of gifting. Everybody love to give presents, especially if you're not paying for it. So yes, you get a gift, I get a gift. It works really, really well. Again, simplify the way you do it. So people can do it with one tweet, one post, with a lot of great integration in the way you apply it. Play hard to get. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite techniques. And I use it quite a lot with the launch of new products and we do it a lot because sometimes we have clients who come to us and say i want to do this and they say have you tested the market no okay so we need to test the market so first thing first we need to make sure that we test the market and for that we uh would you you would use pre-launch campaign pre-launch campaign allows you to see if people are actually interested in what you're going to do and if they have they will comment and then you can start having an interaction and tell me what would you like to see in this and you can be adapted so there's so many ways to do pre-launch campaigns. So before you launch a product or if you want to do a new book or whatever you want to do, a new product, test it with your clients, test it with your community, test it with your social followers, test it with your network, and then you launch. Okay? This is what's something that Monzo did. They created a waiting list that allowed people to uh, they announce what they are about. They allow people to... Um, jump waiting list if it add more friends on it this is so clever so imagine people who are i'm pretty sure what they did they focus on um people who travel a lot and advertise are you traveling a lot and you tired of paying interest rate while well, join monzo monzo is a cut that allows you to cut interest rate well we join the waiting list and we'll let you know when you can access it oh fantastic and if you are a traveler most of the time you would have people that you know travel as well so you will share with them how effective is this yes the more you understand your target audience the more you're likely to to have the right messaging showcasing that you know exactly what are the pains that they're going through and how you can make and provide convenience yes convenience again there's a lot of influences fake influences in the b2c world and uh, great influences in the b2b world as well and i think it's an untapped um it's an untapped um section 
uh, or strategy that is not using B2B enough. And that's a shame because you can do a lot more and bear in mind a lot more not doing enough. So do not be afraid to uh, look at these B2B influencers. And if you ask yourself, who the hell are they? And then simple, they are the ones who are on stage talking at the event. They are the ones who are that your your client your clients and prospects will follow. They are the one who are on Twitter, yes, they are the one who have a large social following online. So don't be afraid to ask. You know, my mom always told me that if you don't ask, you don't get. So don't be, you never know, always ask. And most importantly, when you ask, make sure that you make them feel, you know, special. So give them early access to your technology so they can feel, you know, as I say, special. And they can review it and then share the comment with the audience because obviously whatever that comes out of their mouth will have an influence for your own benefit. Again, look at how, you know, when you think about, I think, that again, it comes back to really, and I can't stress the importance of understanding your target audience, but if you look at what Stripe did, Stripe really understood who they were targeting, and the targeting was very different from PayPal. They were targeting more specifically web developer at first, yes, because then they said that the one who will actually implement the integration of an e-commerce or so forth would be the web developer. So they work with them and offer free trials with certain people, to build advocacy and then also in, you know I work with them on feedback so they can improve their platform and then what happens you build an emotional connection to their brand and obviously PayPal was still on their bum waiting to get more and more payment payment and more customers realized that Stripe was actually gaining gain, you know grabbing more slice a bigger slice of the market. Yes? I actually now using Stripe where I find actually quite good in terms of of um of your user experience so people don't have to know that you're using paper which is quite effective and it's all it's all done through stripe so they don't have to go to another platform which is fantastic i really like it and you got something the power of word of mouth it's something that is free and very effective content content is king content is queen i don't know how many times i'm going to repeat repeat it and it's a shame that people do not do that enough especially when you are an entrepreneur a micro small business you need to be obsessed with providing great value and if you are connected with me on linkedin you realize that i do that all the time because more people see see me more people see that i'm sharing my expertise the more they like to come to me when they need me so the reason why content marketing is so important because it's a lead magnet and it also helps you build your database because if you have no database you have no prospects you have no clients and if your database sits on other people platforms in one day on you know the, uh, the snap like uh, finals you know one finger snap everything is gone so you need to be able to build your own database in case if you don't know what who finals is you need to watch avengers um so <laughs> so when you, when you build a database it allows you to nurture a relationship with your with your audience yes you want to be able to do that with them as often as possible and when you do that with them, the more they see you, so that's why you have to be consistent. Remember that not everybody is ready to buy from you right now. They might just looking for information, they might just looking for advice, and when they're ready, at least they can think about you. So if you think, if I said to you in your mind, shoes, what brand do you think? Yes? The brand that you think is one that's been advertising to you or have been communicating with you the most often. If I said to you, a cupcake, what brand do you think? The brand that has been coming to your mind is the one that has been communicating with you the most often. Yes? So it's the same thing. And you know, do not only advertise or do not only communicate when you're trying to sell something, you need to do it all the time. Okay? So if you're like Antonio and you're gonna give me some attitude and say, Flavi, I don't have time, I'm busy. Well don't worry, I have the solutions to offer you. So first thing first, you can outsource. So look for a researcher and look for a content writer. It should usually be two different people. You know, you go for two different people because it's two different set of skills. And then what you have to do is just come up with a subject that you want to write about and they can do the research for you. And then what you can do if you're really writing a lot of content, pile them together, transform your posts or your articles into an ebook. Bail, make it together. You have a bu- you have a pop up box on your website, people can download, yes. And from that point, they go into your email marketing, automated marketing email that you can send them and provide them a lot of information. Get an intern from university. There's a lot of talented people out there, a lot of students who are looking for expertise and they're craving from that because the market is really hard for young people right now. So you're giving them, giving them a favor as well by giving them a chance to enter the real world and they'll be very happy to do something like that for you. 
again if you if you like me you don't like to write a lot and prefer to talk like i'm doing right now use memo recorder and write you know and send this memo to your pa to your virtual assistant and they can do the writing and if you want to write if you i need to write this this piece then schedule it and come you know and and really commit yourself to do it and i will advise you to do it in the morning i like to wake up at 5 a.m in the morning when when it's quiet and there's no noise out there and it works really well for me so find a time that works for you if you're an evening person then do that but find a time that works for you again you know hire a ghostwriter or delegate use the power of delegation yeah not everything has to be done by you i think the power of building a brand is to be able to trust people who can also be an extension of your business understand what you are about and can help you help help you along the journey so remember you know nowadays it's not about clients it's really about building community so what are you doing so if your website is not getting enough visitors do not waste too much time publishing a lot of content on your website i am not saying to publish any content please to publish content especially if you do it make sure it's seo ready but i would say maybe focus more on publishing guest posts doing guest posts for other networks other networks who have your network yes so focus on that technique it's much more effective and it helps you get there much quicker as well and then when you have obviously the idea is to bring them back to your website so then you have to start building your audience on your own website again you know do not estimate the power of asking your clients for referrals but also maintain that conversation with your clients and making sure that you can always you're always there to help them along the journey because you know your relationship with your clients is not an and uh, one off it should be maintained so at the end of the day you can get more and more of your next clients I hope it makes sense so if you say to me if i really have no idea what to write about so don't worry stay with me until the end i have something to share with you so what would you like to do now so you have two options yes the option is the easy way you i'm going to talk about option a which is a big workshop and the option b which is uh working with us as an as your agency you can do the hard way, which is try to figure out what works for you and do it all yourself. Up to you. So let's talk about the easy way first. Option A is the BAG workshop. The BAG workshop, basically what I've shared with you, is not even 1% of what you will learn from the BAG workshop. This BAG workshop is for people who are looking to be in, a, in an environment where they can really brainstorm and create some ideas that will help them um, you know, take their brand to the next level. So this is what it is about. It's obviously for tech companies, specifically for them. And you will network with other managing directors, marketing directors, business uh, founders, and so forth to think, to find ideas, to, to find ideas and the solutions for what you're looking for. This is not a theory workshop. I hate theory. I want a solution. So we're going to do a lot of solution-driven exercise to help you find the solution that you're looking for, but also for interactions of ideas you will find um, what you need to take your brand to the next level. This is some of the testimonials I have from my previous uh, attendees. The workshop was good, and the workbook helped. The workbook, one to three, the workbook helped me putting through thoughts on paper. I love the workshop of the presentation combined with real brand examples. It was a privilege to be in this branding workshop. This workshop opened up a new world of opportunities. So really, what this is all about, you really want to be part of it. So on day one, it's very much focused on your brand. So you, you might think, yes, I have a brand, but you're like, okay, you have a brand, but are you converting enough? Are you getting enough conversion on your website? Are you getting enough conversion on your on on your public public talk and public speak, uh, public speaking events? What are you doing? If you're not getting enough, something needs to be changed. So come to this, and we can we can nail together. Talk about your value proposition. We can talk about your vision. You can talk about your mission. We can talk about your brand story. Everything that will make your brand unique. Anything that will make the brand think this is a brand, this is a remarkable brand. I really want to be with those guys and nobody else. On day two, when we've created your remarkable brand, we can work on your marketing because marketing is what helps you get people through the door. If you have nobody coming to your store, then what is the point of that? So you need to make sure that you have people going coming through the door so you have more and more clients. We help you find the strategies, but also things that you can do on autopilot and also using a number of new marketing strategies that helps a place of the subconscious. I talked about the packaging earlier on, which is a new marketing uh, techniques in terms of how you simplify the decision process there's a lot more i can share with you in the day two of this uh, workshop i think what's important as well it's um the what happens after a workshop and i realize um quite often when you go to a workshop people say yeah brilliant i'm i'm, I'm gonna do this i'm gonna do it i'm excited and then nothing happens 
Okay, because why what happened is life takes over. You have then your kids need something, your wife needs something, your husband needs something, or you need to you, know, you need to go out with your friends, you have a birthday, you have a wedding, you have everything happens, yes, and your clients need you, therefore you put everything in the back. And this is not gonna happen here because I added an accountability program which allow you to make sure that you stay on track. So we will work together, but also work with in live session with everybody who was in the workshop. So we make sure that you are held accountable to one another. And that's very important. So that will happen over the next three months of us doing that. This is powerful because that's what helps you say that. Uh, you say you're going to do that. What have you done? You can't tell me that because I will not be happy. Okay. So that's what helps you make sure to take your brain to the next level. On top of that, I realized that you know, being good at what I do is not enough to make you also a brand, uh, make your brand successful. There's other things about your business that needs to be put in place. Really, the framework of making sure your brand is a success. So, I'm working. I've put together my team of experts. If you don't know them, you're about to know them right now. And they are they won awards, and they are fantastic. So, Karen Holden, CT Law Firm. You know, she would get advice in, in law. Nucleus IP. Ken Sewell, which is great in IP protection, protecting your IP, which is very important. Michael Apta from IG Smart, when it comes to data protection and GDPR, he is the guy. He knows it all. Clude Probert, which is from White Hat SEO. He also works with HubSpot, one of the biggest uh, digital agency out there. And something can advise you in terms of how to get your website into the first page. Yvonne Bachelard, she's uh, from Impact and great into uh, investment, had to great secure more funds. Kevin Ronaldson, obviously, if you don't know him, he's a legend in the market, in the finance world. And again, something can help you scaling up your business, go from three to 500 employees. And Lance Walker, which is an expert in actually selling to people because a lot of tech companies don't know how to sell. And that's what it's going to teach you. So you're going to have access to all these people. Uh, for your work for, for the workshop i'm also adding to this workshop my linkedin social selling course because linkedin is a great tool right now and if you're not getting any clients from linkedin you are doing something wrong i'm telling you so i'm going to show you how i i i generate clients from linkedin and how you can do it too and trust me you're gonna love it wow you're gonna love it part of it also includes a success roadmap obviously it doesn't look like that but um really a breakdown in terms of what are the things that you need to do to stay on track of your you know on your of your brand and marketing goals so you can really complete the task in an effective way so do not jump because quite often people jump and do things in the wrong order so this roadmap is here to keep you uh, on track of what needs to be done but i think what's important this is my last bonus and i really like this um if you know me i'm i'm very i'm very um spiritual and i love uh doing a lot of meditation so i'm not going to ask you to do meditation here but i'm going to help you how you can develop the power of developing great habits. So over the next 100 days I follow us, we're gonna to work together on developing great habits, so mindset shift, which is key in helping you stay aligned and do not lose momentum and motivation, which happens often. So included is your workbook, obviously, so you can keep um, track of your learnings, but also the decision that you made for the workshop. I've also included the expert guide, which is also key, which contains all information from my previous experts that I've mentioned before. It comes with food because I value food. You know, food is good to, to food your brain. So secret lunches and snacks and beverage are included in tea and coffee as well. And obviously you get your workshop certificate to uh, testify that you've done, um, you've taken the course. Uh, of you taking the BAG course with me. So with, I'm keeping you in London, which is the center of the city, an environment where great things happen. So you want to join me because um, I can't stress the importance of being surrounded by the right group of people in achieving with things that you want. You know, your network is your net worth. And I say that all the time. And, and I wouldn't be here without my network. So the workshop is limited to 20 people. So you first come, first up. You know, so be quick if you want to attend. And again, it's a little summary of everything that is included in this workshop. So I put a lot of great content that I've um um that to make it successful for you, to make it valuable for you. And um you can find information about the package uh, package option. You can free package option on the web on our website if you are interested in signing up. So please be quick. We don't have many. I'm done with a lot of this workshop uh, per year, so you want to be, get involved into this. And to make it safe for you, to make it a safe investment, I'm making it 100% money back. So if you feel that this was a complete nonsense and you didn't learn anything from it and didn't rely, um, relate to it, 
and I give you money back. Option B of this is to work with us as an agency. If you say I don't want to be in a workshop, I want I want you for me, and which is fine. You can have me <laughs> for yourself and my team as well. So uh, we work with clients nationally and internationally. We have clients in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, obviously, and a lot of our clients as well are in the UK. I would say. Um, and none out of 10 of our clients have experienced massive growth. So you can go on our website, we have a lot of portfolio, uh, a lot of our portfolio of examples that we can share with you. So our clients do really well. So they come again, something free things, our core services, our strategy, you know, to distinguish yourself, designed to attract and with your marketing to convert and, um, and build your database for social media and marketing. So we're really good at that. The way we do things differently, we obviously use our core skills in neural marketing, which is working with subconscious mindset, not to trick people, but really to understand how to um, simplify and, and um, facilitate the decision process of buying. So that's what you're going to get with us. So when it comes even for uh, so new marketing, but also color psychology, so color, colorology, understand the power of how to use the colors effectively to put, put to uh, project the right messaging, which is very important. I wanted to give you some examples of clients, not necessarily in, in technology, because a lot of things cannot be mentioned, unfortunately, but you can find more on our website or something that's still ongoing. So Jennifer Ann was one of the clients who started with us in one year. I was launching a brand, she's already won the SBS award, really proud of her, it's fantastic. I love Snack and same thing, they came to us, we work with them on, on their deck presentation, website presentation, and with, and they were able to secure over 180,000, so which is more than what they were asking for, for QuadCube. And now you can find the brand in Great Rose, Eurostar, Emirates, and a lot of places, so I'm really proud of her. Um, again, same thing, we have clients who come to me with just a an idea. We have no idea in terms of how we're going to present the brand, what's going to be about, and it works really well for them. Within six months, we created the brand very quickly. I think that was probably one of the fastest brands we created in two months. They were online, and they had uh, they managed to secure a partnership with HSBC and sponsorship with HSBC as well, and that was within six months. Imagine doing that when you're a small business, the impact it has for yourself. We worked with a lot of more uh, brands that you can see right here. You know, we'll take a bit also in tech. As I mentioned before, we we worked in luxury um, and luxury fashion, FMCG, um, finance, and uh, te yeah, technology obviously. And uh, but now we focus. Now we get fifty percent more of our clients are in technology because that's why we focus. So with a lot more, I can I would love to tell you, which <laughs> unfortunately I can't tell. So my lips are sealed because of the. Uh, NDAs that I sign and I respect my my clients for that. So to finishing off the option C is to keep doing what you what you're doing right now and hope for the best. But as Albert Albert Einstein uh, say is insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if you're here, it's obviously because you want change. And I really hope that you find value in what I shared with you today. So you have three choices. Option A, you want to do the workshop. Option B, you want to work with us as an agency. Option C, you can do, keep doing what you're doing right now. And I really hope you choose option A or B. And and we look forward to helping you along this journey. And again, if you really enjoy this, I have also have something that I forgot that I have for you, which is your gift for you. So I promised to give you a gift, but I have actually a free gift. So the first one is a 10 minute content strategy. So how can you create your content strategy in 10 minutes? This template is fantastic. The second one is how to find 20, create 20 topics that your audience would want to share and read and comment about. So you want to do that. And the sec and the third one is the content writing. If you don't know how to write content, I also put a framework to help you write content together. So this is all for free for you. And you can download this information on, on, on the link just by there. So use that link to download information. And, um, and yes, and have fun with that, please, please. Do content it's it's very effective right so if you really enjoy this please give me give us a five star review on google we have only have uh, i think over 29 five star review on google so if you enjoyed please write me a five star review or send me a link write me a recommendation on linkedin i'll be very happy with that on facebook we are everywhere so 
Coco would be great if you can. I would really appreciate. Again, if you love it, you know, please share with the world. You know, we're all about helping people out there make a difference. So if you can be part of that journey, please will be very, very grateful. And I really hope that you enjoyed this session with me. I wanted to thank you for your time. And again, option A, option B, and I hope it's not option C. And I hope to look forward to speaking to you and hopefully see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.